Welcome to Smart Architectural Programming. My name is Mohammed, and coding alongside me is is George. And um, essentially, uh, this video today will be going over, um, you know, a, a simple uh, Flask cron job that we're going to um, work to integrate into a, a larger application down the line. Um, and essentially, um, you know, uh, we'll be going through kind of trying to explain you know, essentially line by line what's going on. Um, and, you know, on this on this channel, you know, we're working to make things straightforward, um, you know, with no fluff, et cetera. So without further ado, I'll let uh, Mohammed uh, start coding. All right. So um, a little context before we get into the, you know, to, in the code is that uh, like uh, you know we won't go into the exact process as we've already covered this in a couple of our previous videos but we've already set up a virtual environment within which we're going to run the flask application and uh, you will set up the basic template for a flask application here as well now uh, now we'll just start coding again i won't go exactly on how a flask application is set up we've already covered this in a couple of our previous videos as well yeah and and also Mohammed, uh i just wanted to let mm -hmm. our viewers know like if you do have some questions just go ahead and um, put a message in the comment section below and uh we can work to um try to answer those on the, on our next video that's it all right so the first thing that uh we need to focus on is we need to import the relevant libraries that we need to leverage to run this uh run this specific cron job right and like there are many libraries you can use with cron job, but I think we'll be specifically be using APS scheduler because it's simple and it's not as uh, you know cumbersome and difficult to set up as Celery or any other uh, library like that. Um, uh, uh, George, like George has more experience on these libraries, so uh, do you do you want to add anything uh, on this front, George? Uh, no, I mean, you know, essentially, you know, a cron job is just, you know, a, a, a scheduled like automated task. Um, you know, it's typically using like a, like Unix operating system, et cetera. And I believe we're using Ubuntu. Um, I think we're using Ubuntu. What, what, yeah, Linux subsystem, Ubuntu. So essentially, you know, um, it, it, it's kind of a, a widely used library, but I do think that there was some security risk with like uh, running crons on certain uh types of servers etc I, I, I need to uh read up on that but uh i use them all the time um in you know um in different uh uh development jobs um they're pretty quick and dirty and when you snap that in with a, a you know a simple flash application you know and build a microservice i mean i tell you, you like muhammad said i mean you got celery uh where whereby you have to use things like Redis servers etc um, and it can get really complicated, right? Um, or you can use, um, you know, um, you know, things like Gunnicorn, et cetera. But when you're, uh, for something really quick and dirty, like what we're doing, and we're going to integrate this into a larger application, um, uh, like I said, uh, a cron job is, you know, is, is in order for, for me, I, I could say. Uh, you can go ahead, Mohammed. Um, so uh, in the imports, I'll just go over uh, them quickly. Uh, for uh, the ones that are relatively old, we import Flask library and import the Flask object from there to basically set up our Flask application. Uh, then we import the APS scheduler uh, dot schedulers API and uh, import the background scheduler method. Similarly, we again use the APS scheduler uh, library to import the interval trigger. Now, background scheduler interval trigger would come further below in our code, so I'll explain it when we are actually when we actually go over the code that actually you know utilizes these methods we're importing logging now this is important when you're not setting up a user facing application uh, because uh, otherwise the application you wouldn't understand whether the application is running or not until it is printed on the terminal here so to print a uh, print uh, or to see activity on the terminal uh, this logging library is like very useful tool to actually understand what's happening within your application and you can just uh, program a, the application in a certain way that you, it prints out or you know it shows it logs out statements within the terminal uh, for every activity that you want to track date time is a library we use to track you know date and time and um, uh, it 
empty exit basically uh, the context of our usage for this library here is that it would help us that when we exit the code, it automatically uh, makes sure that the uh, the AP scheduler is shut down before the application is closed. So um, next uh, next we're going to add the application. You know we're going to add the uh, code that's going to set up the Flask application and set up the basic uh, logging uh, uh, basic logging configuration for the logging library. So we uh, app equals flask is the traditional way we can set up the flask app in the app.py file for a flask application and logging dot basic config basically sets sets up uh, uh, the basic logging uh, logging that we'll need to do for in the con console for this particular application. Um, the next aspect is uh, we're going to set up a global variable last time uh, last runtime basically. Uh, this is for a small utility that we're going to be develop, uh, developing on the side. Uh, I mean, just so that this uh, video we see a little visual aspect of the cron job as well, because uh, some applications don't have visual aspect to them at all, right? Particularly a cron job, it doesn't need to have a visual aspect. It's just running background processes uh, that your application needs. So uh, most of the time it would be just, uh, you know, uh, there would be no visual aspect to actually see whether the application is working or not. That's why we are leveraging the logging library to see whether it you know, functions as it should. And uh, the visual aspect, that's why I'm adding that, you know, so it get, you know, we can get, you know, show, you know, we can show a little more clarity on the application when, when it's set up. So we're setting up a global variable uh, on it and equating its value to none. Uh, because basically this where this global variable is going to, uh, you know, basically this glo uh, glo global variable is going to, uh, you know, show us the last runtime of the cron, uh, cron job on a specific Flask route. Next, we'll add the major main and probably the only route in the Flask application is the home route. When we open this route, it's going to access the global last runtime uh, variable and then it's going to return uh, a statement with the uh, actually last runtime of the application and we define the last runtime of the application within the next definition in the my cron job uh, de, uh, function and here we set last runtime equal to date time date time now when the application starts running when the cron job starts running and at the same time we log that uh, information whenever the application is run on uh, using the last runtime variable which records when the background process starts running. Um, next part is basically where we set up, uh, you know, what have uh, the, you know, the APS scheduler. So the cron job actually functions like the, these are not roots and they're not roots. Uh, so we're going to simply go over uh, how we can set up a basic, uh, you know, scheduler or a cron job with uh, using the APS scheduler application. So if we go right at the top here, we first in a instantiate the background scheduler um, uh, scheduler and then we set the scheduler to start. We use the start method to start the background uh, APS scheduler uh, scheduler, uh, you know, scheduler. And then uh, we schedule the job using the add job method to uh, of the background scheduler where we set up the function name, which is my cron job. Uh, where you basically we set the function that's going to deal with the micron job and that's that we set up right here basically so whenever the cron job uh, sets up it's going to go over this and it's going to run this definition um, then it's gonna we get, we set the interval trigger that we uh, imported above basically this sets up the difference or you know the the time duration after which it needs to re-trigger the this uh, you know this uh, job over and over again. We're setting minutes equals to one. Basically, we want uh, the job to be triggered every one minute. Um, then we're going to set the ID, micron job ID, and then we're going to uh, set the name, print every every one minute, and uh, replay. Then we move on to the uh, a, uh, to the eight exit function that we are using. Eight exit dot register. This basically means again this function. Uh, may, uh, make sure that it's run whenever the program is exited. And within that, we use the lambda scheduler dot shutdown function, which shut down the scheduler when the application is shut down. Um, now, uh, that's pretty much all that is 
uh, that there is to it uh, that there's this is pretty much everything you need to do to set up a basic cron job um, and uh, now we'll uh, run the flask application and see if it works we might need to give it a minute there to see if it actually runs but uh, if you can look at this logging information here that the cron the APS scheduler has started and the APS scheduler has added job print every one minute to job store uh, default. So uh, while this might not seem that surprising you um, you know I think uh, the gravity of the ease by which we're able to start the APS scheduler can be understood by the fact that uh, this is very difficult to do in Celery. Right, it's very difficult to actually get the application started. Uh, you know, the the salary uh, scheduler started, and for it to actually function and add jobs, like that's a much much complicated uh, process. So this is this shows how easy you can uh, easily you can set up a cron job using the APS scheduler library. And we, um, as I think, there's some more time before the job starts running. George, do you want to add anything in the meantime? Okay. I think it, I think it just ran, but um, you know, to to Muhammad's point, um, you know, Celery is a you know essentially a you know a Python library that's used for you know uh, automated tasks, but it's more it's it, it's more for like I would say more enterprise level, right? Uh, there's a lot going on. There's a lot under the hood. It actually mm -hmm. uses uh you know a different um a different server. Um, maybe it's Rabbit uh, like a queuing server like RabbitMQ or you know, or a Reddit server, you know, to to kind of broker the the, the messages. But for something like um, the application that we're bit, that we are going to be building, this is like totally um, acceptable and really straightforward. I love this. Uh, I love this particular uh, module. Um, and I think it just ran, Mohammed. Um. So yeah. So if you can see here, we've log like again. We're using we're seeing this stuff because we're using the log function that we've set uh, as info. So it's showing us that the APS scheduler dot execute uh, dot default is running a job print every one minute. Trigger is one minute and next job run is the next minute. Um, scheduled, right? It has scheduled this job. It has ran this job with at this date time as we have set up in our you know define a cron job function. The function that runs every time a cron job is run and uh, it again defaults to a, a job. Uh, you know, it runs the job and tells us it's ran that job successfully. It's ran that again, and it's going to keep running that job every minute. So, uh, like, while that is particularly not that important, let's uh, you know, let's open and see that visual aspect that we created for this uh, for this particular project. Last job, uh, last run time of job 2023, 20, 9, 29, 10, 16, 52. So this a particular page is another way we can actually see uh, the job running, right? But the thing is the easiest and most most simplest way is to just use a logger to see it in the terminal, but uh, like to be, uh, you know, to create a more visual aspect to it, like you can set up a page and, you know, a function like this to just see uh, if the jobs are running successfully. Uh, but yeah, I mean that's pretty much how uh, that's pretty much it to how you can set up a simple cron, jo cron job using APS scheduler and the Flask framework. Uh, uh, before we wrap up, George, anything to uh, to add? No, I, no, I think uh, I think you went over it uh, quite adroitly, and um, you know it, it's really about you know um, being uh, uncomplicated on this channel, and I think you pretty much kept it uh, kept it simple, Muhammad. So if you if you guys have any questions um, in terms of future content, um, like I said, you know, please uh, message us in the in the comment section below, um, and uh, we'll try our best to uh, to respond and see if we can create a video to kind of uncomplicate uh, things for you guys. That's all I have, Mohammed. Um, that's it for today's video, and we'll see you in the next one.